G'day, hey, hi, and welcome. Alright, uh, there's another one of my voiceovers. Again, you'll have to deal with that till I get the uh, mic adapter for my GoPro Hero 5. But I thought a good topic, um, I'm sure it's been covered to death, but might as well cover it again anyway, is, is what's a good motorcycle to, or type of motorcycle to start on? Now, the debate whether you should start on a 600cc Super Sport or a 1000ccs and stuff like that. That one, I, I've done that one as well, but it's kind of like, that's if you're getting into the sport bike genre. And you have, everybody has an opinion on that one. Uh, my take is, no, you shouldn't probably start off with bikes quite that powerful. Even the 600s are pretty powerful. This is a 600 that I'm on right now. And to start with it with no prior experience... I think you're just setting yourself up for a recipe for disaster. Uh, even if you take the course and everything, it's just it's a little bit too much bike for... Uh, how, how, how's the best way to put it? It's that when you're riding it normal, no problem. You know, even in the rain. But it's a bike that you got to... There's a bit of an attention to detail. It's not that it's difficult to ride. It's just that it's a performance bike and it can get ahead of you very quickly, uh, especially lack of experience. And the thing that new riders need to have is something that is really forgiving because it's kind of what uh, happens is when something goes awry it, like it's complete catastrophic failure for example if you spin out a bit on the rocks you end up whiskey throttling and completely looping the bike on the ground you know you spin out whereas something with a little bit less power and a little bit more forgivable might be the better way to go uh, so what should you look for in a, a, a true starter bike? Well, I know most people don't want to start with a starter starter bike, but here's the thing. What you want to look for uh, is a bike that if you dropped it, you're not going to care. Because if you are going to drop a motorcycle, typically, statistically speaking, it's going to be in your first year of riding. Because you have the least amount of experience. I know, and most people, they don't ride very much. Uh, today I did uh, 82 runs uh, this year on the bike today uh, as, as making this video and for me that's not as much riding as I would like to do I, you know there's 365 days a year 82 out of them is not bad but most people are probably going to ride like I know some people they get out like two three times a year uh, there's no way your your skills are going to stay sharp two three times a year uh, 82 times out and I'm still learning my bike you know like uh, I'm not afraid of it or like that because I've got lots of other experience on other bikes and I you know group around bikes and all that so I've got the experience I just have to know to know just about I know just about everything about this bike yet the, the, the only the only things left mystery on this bike uh, will be basically to figure out on a racetrack that's about the only thing I got left to do to this bike but for street handling, how does it handle in the rain? How does it handle on the you know gritty stuff, the rough roads, that kind of thing? I already, I, I, you know, I've got enough mileage on it now that I, you know, I can understand the predictability of when I'm going to get myself in trouble and when I'm not. Uh, so if I get into trouble on this bike, I did it, not the bike. Whereas with a newbie, it's you don't know what you don't know. And when you get a bike that can get ahead of you really quickly, and it's not even a speed thing. It's, it could be just a handling thing. You got a shorter, uh, the weight. Uh, this is a pretty light bike, but uh, typically with a, a good beginner bike, you want something that's fairly light. Now, there's problems with lightweight bikes, such as the wind blows them over. <laughs> that happens quite a bit, too. Uh, but, um, you know, things like that. Uh, you, you you want a bike that if you did drop it, it's not your dream bike, and you, you didn't you know you're not gonna spend you know I know life is short and everybody wants to have everything they want right right now. But the picture you buy yourself a brand new R1 or an Aprilia RSV4 or a brand new Harley Davidson or something like that, and you dump the thing, uh, you, you're gonna feel crappy. Now, can that happen to experienced riders? Of course it can. Uh, in fact, experienced riders, uh, the more you ride, the more likely you are to spin out your bike. But there's things that when you're a little more seasoned in your riding, you, you know, a, a guy riding around on a 100cc motorcycle with 10,000 miles under his belt is going to be better off than the guy who's got the best motorcycle, the safest motorcycle in the world, uh, and has like no experience. 
people cutting you off, you uh, overshooting corners, stuff like that. That comes with experience, and that comes with learning the motorcycle you're on. Um, throttle control is such an overlooked thing. Uh, riding position. Uh, a lot of people like to try to look cool in their riding, uh, especially when they're on cruisers. They tend to like to get those highway pegs up front, hanging off like either crash bars and stuff like that. Well, yeah, you look cool, but when something happens, you're now in a completely unstable position, and you're going to find that out the hard way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, with sport bike guys, the first time you turn off a, uh, you know, a, a paved road onto a gravel road, yeah, you're going to you're going to scare yourself because you're not used to it. And that type of thing. this bike, I, <laughs> I kind of started off treating it like a dirt bike before I was able to get it on the road. So, uh, yeah, you know, like there, there's nothing surprises me. Uh, but I've, you know, I've already had a couple of, um, you know, sharp corners where it was just divvity at the corner and you'd feel the back end let up a little bit. Uh, not enough to say it's a spin out, but uh, had you been going too fast for that corner? Yeah, you, you got to learn how to read corners, particularly the 90 degree, like when you come to a T in the road. That's the one that gets, because all the gravel and stuff like that, mannerisms of, you know, especially trucks every time they go around these corners, they're always driving half, half both of the two tires in the ditch, right? So they're always shooting gravel and stuff on the roads. And you learn to anticipate that stuff. Uh, but the best way to do it is on a bike, because if you do get caught by it, um, the best way is to be on a bike that's really forgiving. Uh, you can start off on like 250s, 300s, and stuff like that, and they are very cheap in insurance, and they're very forgiving and stuff like that. And they're telling you the truth, you're going to have a blast on those. The only time you don't really have a fun on a small bike is when you're trying to follow bigger bikes. Because the bigger bikes, even on my 600, uh, if I'm trying to follow big tour bikes, they tend to cruise at a... They, don't, they, they won't go as fast top-end-wise as my bike, but they tend to go uh, get up to the highway speeds a lot quicker. Just It's just a, no replacement for displacement. It's not even a horsepower thing. It's just, you know, those bigger bikes, they, they tend, they're meant for cruising. And sometimes it's hard to, you know, catch up to them. Maybe not catch up to them, but stay with them a bit. But once you catch up to them, you're fine. But that type of thing. So when you're on a little bike, you're always winding out the smaller bikes to keep up with the big bikes. Uh, they have they tend to have a lot more stable throttles because you know the power and stuff like that. But uh, when you uh, stable in the sense of like when they're at the highway speed, they just stay at the highway speed because they're not revving high. Uh, whereas the smaller bikes, even like a 600 like I got, you're, you're revving pretty high. You know, you're at 5,000 RPM at 100 kilometers an hour, which is about 60 miles an hour in six gear. So that, that's a pretty high rev, you know what I mean? Uh, that type of thing. With the, the other thing is, is with the really small bikes, is they're very forgiving because they take you forever to get up to speed. But that's also what keeps you, gives you time to react to things. Where bikes like mine... They, you'll get up to speed almost instantaneously. Uh, they don't give you time to react to stuff. And if you're, you're, you tend to ride a bit hot, especially with lack of experience, uh, it doesn't take much to overshoot a corner. You really have to be mindful of your riding and stuff like that. And the first thousand kilometers on any motorcycle, or 600 miles, we'll say, a uh, thousand kilometers, 600 miles, is going to be learning the motorcycle. You're going to find yourself... Uh, no matter how much experience you have, it, you're going to be finding yourself looking at the bike, which distracts you a bit. Uh, you know, okay, you're not quite fully, you know, you're used to your old bike, so you go to hit the the uh, signal light and you hit the horn, uh, stuff like that. So for the first little bit, you're kind of distracted learning the bike. Uh, when you're a new uh, a newbie, you're really distracted because you're trying to focus on so many things. You can get overwhelmed very quickly with a bike that has a lot of power. But where if you've got a bike with not quite so much power and more forgiving, it doesn't mean you have to go really small. I, I would say, uh, yeah, the, like the Ninja 250, the Ninja 300, that, those type of bikes are good beginner bikes. But I would even say, if you, if you didn't care about the looks, maybe get an older bike in the 550cc or even a 650cc non-super sport. Uh, that's a bike that you'll grow into and you won't outgrow right away. The problem with the really tiny bikes like the 300s and the 250s is you outgrow them after about two weeks. Of, if you ride every day for two weeks, you, you'll be going back to the store to buy another bike. Uh, where some people say, well, that's why you buy the bigger bike to start with. But then uh, if you don't ride very much, again, it takes longer for you to get... Uh, 
your 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 writing skills and and once you get your you know what these things do diminish and they get like anything it gets rusty over time uh, even if you you rode like 10 minutes a day or half an hour a day on your bike uh, that's better than going out on a major tour sometimes because you don't overwhelm yourself you give yourself time to adjust to long rides the first time you go on a ride over an hour when you've never done it before on any bike is going to be exhausting for you no matter how comfy the bike is uh, you're gonna sleep well that night why because your body's not used to that uh, and when you do your first road trip uh, you know especially if you're out on the bike all day uh, trust me by after about the second hour you, your, your attention span starts to go a bit you're not paying attention to the road no it takes a while to get into that it's best to do it on a bike that's more forgiving uh, and again a bike that you know I would never buy a new bike that was like a 200 or fi uh, 300 cc or whatever I'd buy one used and okay yeah you might outgrow it but you know get a get a, a non-sport bike or whatever or naked bike or whatever or a cruiser or whatever it is in the 500 cc range you at least it'll hold you off until you get your skills in and can get in a bigger you know get in something bigger get on something bigger once you get more get more uh experience but anyway that's just my take on it so the type of bike doesn't matter but uh as much as uh the you know the forgiveness of the bike so that type of thing i don't know if this helps out much but we'll try it anyway all right take care